rest and moves in a straight line with uniform acceleration. It passes three points A, B, and C. It doesn't specify that it starts at A from rest, correct? Yeah. For A, B is 105, B, C is 63. It takes six seconds to travel from A to B and two seconds to travel from B to C. Find its acceleration. All right, that's fair enough. The only difference is uh, you start off, let's say, on the red dot here. Let me see. On the red dot, I start off a rest all the way over here. I pass A at U, I continue to B, I'm going faster, and then I go past C. So instead, we're going to have to use U equals U. Is that all right? And therefore, the other one is also U equals U. So uh, the acceleration is A for both of them. The acceleration is 105 for A to B and 168 for A to C because you add the 63 to the 105. T is six seconds for A to B and eight seconds for A to C. Now, uh, what we got here, guys, is... All that we need to do differently is just lob in a U here. So S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. You need to have a U in here. Okay? And that means you'll have a 6U plus 18 A. All right, uh, you can probably divide both sides by three, but yeah, just don't bother. It's no need. Okay, uh, next part is A to C. Once again, we're going to use S equals U T plus a half A T squared. So it's going to be U times eight plus a half A times eight squared. 64 divided by two is 32 A. A2 and 168. Uh, in this case, dividing by 8 would be a good idea because it's quite obvious what the numbers are. Now, we're looking for acceleration. We'll need both of them eventually. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply uh, this one by minus 6. And get rid of the U's to begin. So these are my two equations. I'm going to leave the top one alone. And I'm going to multiply the bottom one by minus 6. Minus 121. We're expecting a positive acceleration. Anything else would be, let's say, wrong. It's getting faster, so it has to be a positive number. So 121 take away 105 is uh, minus 16, and then 16 divided by 6 will be acceleration equals 8 over 3. Is that all right, you guys? Now, we'll figure out what U is now. U is 21 take away 4A. U is 21 subtract 4 times A over 3. So 21 subtract 4 times A over 3. Yeah, it's 31 over 3. Is that okay? Yes? Uh, where was it? Sorry, 6 times 21 is 126, which makes this what, guys? Divided by 6, and we get... Oh, sorry, sorry, it's uh, 21 now, is it? Minus 21? 21 divided by 6 is? 3.5? Yeah, it's a nicer number. Sorry guys, acceleration is 3.5. Then put 3.5 in here. And what you get instead? Huh? 14, because you, you got to put in the U value here. You want the U value, so it's 21 minus 4A. 21 minus 14. Sorry, 21. Minus 14, and that's U equals 
seven. All right. The distance of A from the starting position. Distance of A from the starting position. Well, that's not so bad because you actually know, you know you start at zero. You know your velocity as you pass A is what? Seven. You know your acceleration is? 3.5. Uh, you want the distance, yeah? I go for phi squared equals u squared plus 2as. If you want it in, uh, if you want it in one go. Forty nine equals zero plus two times three point five times s forty nine equals seven s. Sorry, s and then s equals seven meters. That's can we get the windows by the way? I completely forgot. Something similar. Keep an eye on my calculations as I go along. I do tend to have small slips here and there, so just keep an eye on it, okay? And pull me up straight away if you see something. Now, all right, let's start off with reading the question properly. Does he start off with at A, at U equals zero, or is he already moving? Let's find out. Doesn't specify, does it? Yeah, so that would imply that he's already moving. So we've established that he's already moving, okay? So that's the first part. Now, uh, A, B, B to C, and C to D, okay? Now, what's the golden rule about our u vests? What way do I create them? And how many of them will I have? Four them. I think I'm going to have three of them. A to B, A to C, and A to D. Okay, so this one's A to D. Uh, you know it's going from the start every time, yeah? It's because I want a common U value. If I don't do that, I won't have that common U value, okay? Now, what do we show in here, guys? So, five seconds for A to B. How many seconds from A to C? Ah, huh? eight, good man. Uh, U, U, U. Fees, we don't go near. Common acceleration, does it give us the acceleration? No, so that's A, that's A. That's also A. Now the S's, we got all the S's ready to go. S, uh, this is from A to B. The distance from A to C, <coughs> because it's two two twenties, and then finding the distance from A to C. Sixty. All right. Uh, which two data sets are complete, or closer to being complete? A, B, and A, C. So my suggestion would be to get a simultaneous equation like the last question using S equals U, T plus I have A, T squared. Using A, B, and A, C. So U, T plus I have A, T squared. Keep an eye on the calculations. 20 equals U times 5 plus a half A times 5 squared. 20 equals 5u plus 12.5a. For the blue section, 40 equals u times 8 plus a half a times 8 squared. 40 equals 8u. Plus a half a times eight squared, which is three two a. Then I am going to divide by eight, and I should get five 
equals a plus 4a, four, sorry, u plus 4a. All right, because I don't want to deal with the decimals, I'm going to get the u first, okay? So I'm going to get rid of u. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to keep this the same. Then I'm going to subtract uh, 5 times that formula, so it's going to be 5u, take away 20a. Minus 5 times that is 25. Minus 7.5a is minus 5. 7.5a equals 5. A equals 5 over 7.5. A equals 2 thirds. And that's 2. Okay. Need to find the u value next. I use this formula up here because it looks relatively easy. u equals 5 take away 4a. u equals 5 minus 4 times 2 over 3 u equals 5, take away 8 over 3. That should be 7 over 3, but look, it's a, it's a morning time, so I'll make sure. 7 over 3. I don't know about you guys, but by the time I do all this, I actually forget what the question wants from me, so you just have to go back and read it again. So... Find how long to the nearest tenth of a second it takes to run from C to D. I'm going to use AD, and then I'm just going to take 8 away from the answer. Does that make sense? Find the total time to go from A to D, and then take away the total time to go from A to C, and that leaves over the time taken to go from C to D. So I'm going to grab all this here. Oops, right, we're going to go down here. We have everything we need now. All right, let's fill her in. So U is 7 over 3. B, we don't care about. A, we know is 2 over 3, thank you. Now, do you want to go through a minus B form? It's not the best route. Do you know what I'm saying? You could use S equals uh, UT plus a half AT squared. You'll get a minus B form out because what you want is the T value from A to D. You get a minus B form. It will work, but it's hassle. So I'd be inclined to do two steps this time. Uh, I'd go for phi squared equals u squared plus 2as, get the v value, and then use phi equals u plus at to find the t value. Saves me going through a, a minus b formula with fractions. I tell you what, somebody try the minus b formula using s equals ut plus a half at squared and see if you get the same answer. Any problem there is? You know, pick somebody randomly now. Yep. Oh, brilliant. Good man. Makes our life easy. Now, 60 equals 7 over... Oh, wait, wait, I'm not doing it that one. Uh, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So, v squared equals 7 over 3 squared plus 2 times 60. Sorry, 2 times 2 over 3 times 60. Now, this is easy because it's just put into the calculator and get your answer. So, 7 over 3 squared plus 2 times 2 thirds times 60. Square root that. 
that's not great. But anyways, uh, P squared equals 769 over 9. B equals the square root of 769 over 3. Now I'm going to use V equals U plus AT. This number here, please do not round it off because it introduces a decimal error. U is 7 over 3. A is 2 over 3 times T. So it's going to be square root of 769 over 3. Take away 7 over 3. And once you do that, you then got to divide by 2 thirds. And that will give you your T value all day long. Yep. So this number, take away 7 over 3. Divide your answer by 2 over 3. A T value of 10.365. So 10.365 equals T. Now what do I have to do with that T value? Take away 8. And the time taken from C to D will be 2.365. Did I ask you to round it off to the nearest tenth or something? 2.4 seconds. Is that what you got? Happy days, the minus B and that give you the same answer. From rest, start at zero. Unit form acceleration of one followed by immediate acceleration of three. So one, the time you spend accelerating and then the time you spend decelerating is much shorter because uh, it's three times bigger than the acceleration period. So to me, this would mean this is 3t, and this is t. Total time is 20 seconds. Well, that's convenient, because 20 seconds will therefore equal 4t, and then t will equal 5. So that means I have 15 seconds for the first sector and 5 seconds for the last sector. All right, that's pretty handy. Uh, done that. Maximum speed reached. Uh, we know the base is 15. Yeah, you can do it two ways, all right? So the first way you could do it is you could say acceleration equals tan x, which is a uh, P over 15, and P over 15 equals 1. This implies that P equals 15. Second way you could have done it was U vast, and you could have just done P equals U plus AT, and you would have got P equals 0 plus uh, 1 times 15, which is 15. Your choice. You can use tan X or U vast, your choice. Either way, it's 15, okay? Total distance covered. Well, I'm inclined to use the uh, area of a triangle here. You can also use UT plus a half AT squared. Your choice. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared, or the area of the triangle. I'm inclined to use uh, 20, 15, a half, uh, 20 times 15. Half of 300 is 150 meters. Is that okay with you guys? Or you can use S equals UT plus a half AT squared, which would be zero times 20 plus a half. Oh wait, no, you can't do it that way. You'd have to do it in two separate parts. If you use S equals UT plus a half AT squared, you'd have to treat both parts separately, which would take a lot more time. So you don't want to do that. You'd have to get the yellow part, follow it up with the blue part, and add both results together. You can do that if you want, but it takes a lot longer. Okay. All right. Any questions? We're good. All right, let's move on.
14. Let us go. And we'll go for this. A train travels from rest at A to rest at B in one minute. It starts by accelerating uniformly for 12 seconds and finishes by decelerating uniformly for 8 seconds. In between, it travels at uniform acceleration. Uniform velocity, I mean. To me, that's a distance time diagram all day long. Okay, so I am going to go for here straight, then deceleration is slightly more abrupt, and you're good. Two triangles and a rectangle have to equal a thousand because it's a kilometer long in total, I believe. There you go. So distance is a thousand. Area A plus area B plus area C will equal a thousand. Now, start at 12, 12 seconds long, 8 seconds long. On rest, call the peak here V. Interesting. Call this T. There's got to be a give on this. Where does it say that? Ah. <laughs> Question. Uh, yeah, T equals 40. There's always an extra piece of information there that you just don't read, okay? So it has to be 40 seconds because the whole thing is 60 seconds. Okay, so yeah, just use just use the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle equals a thousand, and you should be good to go. A half base times height plus the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle equals a thousand. Six b plus forty v. Plus 4v equals 1,000. Uh, this implies 50v equals 1,000. And we get v equals uh, 20. Is more than likely what should happen is if the other one's going 14, yeah? What should happen is you're not capable of overtaking at this section. Why are you not capable of overtaking in the blue section? Because you're going slower than 14. Why, more than likely, are you not capable of overtaking in the yellow section? While you're going faster than the, than the train you're pursuing, what should have happened in the early sections? He should have built up a sufficient gap. You can't guarantee that, though, can you? So what I do is I do a quick check. How much distance did we cover in the first 12 seconds again? I think we have it here. 6V and 6V is, anybody? We covered 300 meters for A. Everybody agree with that? I could just do a quick check. 12 multiplied by 14. Could be wrong here, guys. I think I am wrong. I think it takes place here. So, no train pass, move in the same direction, parallel tracks, speed uniform 14. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Where did I get five from? Uh, phi is 20, not 50. I was looking at the 50 there. That's what happened to me. So, 20, 20 times uh, 6 is 100 ants. 20 meters, that's that's a much better number. You travel 120 meters in the acceleration phase, is that all right? And what's 12 times 14? 168. 168, so it, it has a 48 meter 
had started. Would you agree with that? Okay. So let's start off. Let's start everything in the second sector if we can. So I'll just ignore the first sector. One of them has a 48 meter head start. Would you agree with that? So let's hopefully they take the overtake takes place in the constant velocity. Okay. We can also check that as well, can't we? How would you check that? What's 40 times v? What's 40 times v, guys? Yeah, but v is 20. So 40 times 20? 800, agree with that? So what's A and B in total? How much distance did you cover using A and B? You're at 920 at this point here, aren't you? Everybody agree? How many seconds does it take you to get to 920? 52. What's 52 times 14 really quickly? Anybody? 728. Have I already overtaken the other train? I have, haven't I? So where does that mean the overtake takes place? The overtake takes place somewhere in the pink section. Everybody agree with that? That's a good thing. Otherwise, it'd be a ridiculously tough question. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off UVAST in the two sections. Like so. So UVAST is going to take place. So we're going to start off uh, in the next section. So UVAST. Then we're going to have UVAST. We're going to ignore the initial triangle. So what's your starting off speed? V is 20. You have no acceleration during this time, do you? Your S value, well, put it this way. S1 and S2, which one's going to be bigger? You should be able to tell me which one's going to be bigger and why. That's S2, not 52, by the way. All right. What you're going to be able to tell me is which one has to gain the ground? Which one's going to gain the ground? Which one's catching which? The green train, or train A, is going to catch the blue train, train B. What's the lead the blue train has? 48. So would everybody therefore agree that S1 take away S2 must be 48? Because S1 has to cover an additional 48 meters to catch up. Everybody cool with that? So next thing we're going to do is we're going to do, we can actually just use speed multiply by time. Why am I allowed to use speed multiply by time? Because we're resetting the clock here, aren't we? We're actually starting here. I'll color something different. We're starting at this section. The other one is 48 meters ahead. And we're resetting the clock here at t equals zero to find out how much extra time it took to get the overtake in. Is that okay? So what happens here is what's a speed multiplied by time is 20t. And then this one here, 14 t, and then equals 48, 6 t equals 48, and then finally t equals 8. Took an extra 8 seconds, okay, but once again, I'm not done yet. We forgot to take in the 20 seconds we, remember the 20 seconds, uh, sorry, the 12 seconds we, we, we just ignored at the start. So after how many seconds does the overtake take place? 20. And this 20 is broken into two sections. It's broken into section one where you're, where you're accelerating. We already know the answer for it. And we said earlier it was 6V. And 6V is 100 and 20. And that took place in 12 seconds. Now we have an extra eight seconds to worry about. And how fast are you going for those extra eight seconds? We're talking about train one here. 
P is 20. 6 times 20? I say 8 times 20? Add them together. 280 meters from your beginning is where the overtake takes place, okay? Car can accelerate a 1 and decelerate a 2. This, uh, I think we should go for a velocity time diagram here. Make life really easy. Accelerates a 1, makes the acceleration period longer. It's going to stay, if it has a speed limit, more than likely it's got, you're going to get stuck at constant velocity. It's not guaranteed though, so we're going to check that out. And then you're going to come back down again. So, now uh, this will be 2t and this is 1t on the basis of the ratio of the acceleration to deceleration. Okay, uh, next thing, we know that A plus B plus C is 300. We know the V value is, we don't know the V value yet. Oh, we do it 16. Now, acceleration equals tan X which equals 16 over 2t, which in turn equals 1, because the acceleration is 1. 16 equals 2t, t equals 8. Okay? So t equals 8. Days. All right. Next trick. T equals eight. That makes that sixteen. Makes that eight. Call this section uh, X for the. Actually, wait. I need a different letter. Call it T one. Now, use the area of all three sections combined. So, a half, oddly enough, 16 times 16 for the first one. Base times height. Plus 16 times T1 for the rectangle. Plus a half, 8 times 16 for the deceleration period. Should equal 300. So, 16 multiplied by 16, divided by 2, 128, plus 16t1, should be 64, it is 64, 300, take away 128, take away 64, 108, 16t1, 108, 108 divided by 16, t equals 6.75 seconds. Now, that's not my entire answer, it wants the total length of time taken for the full journey. So that's going to be my 16, my T1, and my 8 combined. So I need to add on an extra 24 to get uh, 30.75 seconds. Now, next one is, it's going to be, there's no... Uh, there's no speed limit, so what does that mean you're going to do with your velocity time diagram when there's no speed limit? Uh, just going to be acceleration followed by immediate deceleration. So this part here doesn't exist. So I'm just going to bring it in like that. 
Right? Now, for those of you, it's not going to be 16 anymore, is it? We don't know, do we? No. Okay, so the answer is we don't know. So that's just going to be V. Now, what's the trick again? 2T and 1T, the ratio of the acceleration to deceleration, okay? 300 in total. Now, we have a play here. The play is that tan x equals, anybody? V over, and the acceleration is, this implies V equals 2T. Is that all right? Now, what's the area of the full thing? It's the area that's a half 3T multiplied by V. Ever go with that? 3T for the entire base, V for the perpendicular height. Uh, what I'm going to ask you is next is what is what is the area of the triangle? It's not 300 because that's your total distance. Okay. Uh, I'm going to substitute out B. What am I going to turn V into? Huh? 2T, yeah. Not very long. 3t squared equals 300, t, t squared equals 100, t equals 10. We're expecting it to be faster because there's no speed limit. The last answer was 30.75 seconds. This one has to be a much shorter answer because there's no speed limit. All right. All right. Have a look at 20 now. All right, there's a trick here, okay? So be careful. Set up two different systems. You've asked them both. We're just going to keep pushing, guys, okay? Now, there's a trick here, okay? You can, you can do this two possible ways, but I want us all to agree on the same method, okay? Two seconds later means that the times aren't there. Same. You could use a system like this. You could use T plus 2 and T. The first car is out there two seconds longer than the second car. Or somebody else could use a system like this where somebody says, oh, this one's T. And this one's T minus two. Is that all right? Both systems work, but I think we should agree on one system so we only have to do one solution. Let's do T plus two and T. Is that okay? So neither system's wrong. It's just, it's just about agreeing on the same system so we don't have to do two separate solutions. So that's how I'd start that one off. Okay. Initial speed eight. Uniform acceleration four. Second car Q starts initial velocity 30. Well, it's going to overtake pretty damn quickly. There is a uniform acceleration three. <laughs> Show that, that after passing P, Q will never be ahead for more than 74 meters. Interesting. Okay, think of it like this. That's P, and this is Q. P moves off with a two second head start. And then what happens with Q? As P is moving, what, what's, what's Q gonna do? Q is just gonna go right by it, isn't it? Okay, Q is gonna go right by it. And it's going to continue to go by it until what happens? 
It's going to continue to extend its gap until what happens? The point at which P reaches a velocity of, oh, oh, to the point there, velocities are there. Same. Does that make sense? Where uh, phi P would equal phi Q. Does that make sense? Phi, the point at which phi P equals phi Q is the maximum uh, distance ahead Q will be over P. Any time after that, what will happen? P will start to close in on Q and eventually overtake it again. So we need to do two things. The first thing we need to find out is when do they overtake each other? What do we know about overtakes? The distances are there. Same. So in step one, I would put S1 equals S2. I'd use UT plus a half AT squared and find the T value. Okay? Off you go. So we're going to find out how long it takes to overtake. So. Yeah. UT plus half AT squared. And use A times T plus 2. Plus a half, four times t plus two squared. And that should equal thirty t plus a half, three times t squared. Okay, eight t plus sixteen plus two into t squared plus four t plus four. This section, uh, this section here, the same as that part there. Okay. Equals 30t plus 1.5t uh, squared. 8t plus 16 plus 2t squared plus 8t plus 8 it's 3t plus 1.5t squared okay 2t squared take away 1.5t squared is 0.5t squared 8t plus 8t is 16t, 16t take away the 30t is minus 14t, 16 plus 8 is 24, 24 plus 8 is 24, I'm going to double it to get t squared minus 28t plus 48, is it going evenly? 2 and 24, nope. All right, going to do the minus B on this, but it looks good. Like. 28 plus square root of 28 squared. You know what, lads? I'm out of time. Let's be honest about this. Try and finish off 20 yourself, okay?